Good day, everyone. This is Chris back again at the Ancient Scholar, and uh, today I'm going to continue talking about high frequency oscillators. Um, and uh, we'll look at, uh, I'm going to start talking a little bit about a theory of how, how the high frequency ventilation works. Uh, but before that, I just want to go ahead and actually show you um, an oscillator in all of its glory. Uh, so, on the, the last video that I did on high frequency ventilation, um, if you can see, basically we looked at this part here and a little of this part here, and we should. Uh, have a pretty decent idea of what they do. Uh, so right here is your bias flow. Okay, um, here is my power, my mean airway pressure, my frequency, my percent I time. There's my airway pressure readout, my start stop. Um, there's my piston level uh, for uh, zeroing and my alarm interface. Uh, of course, here is where I have where the magic happens, so to speak. I've got a, you can see that black rubber, uh, kind of a rubber uh, um, seal over a piston that moves and oscillates back and forth. And um, as we move down the oscillator here, um, I actually have the ventilator circuit here. And as you notice, it's very different looking. And of course, I have pressure uh, flow transducing lines uh, that go into the circuit, the blue, uh, the red, and the green. Um, connectors there. Um, you notice that this, this circuit looks very different than uh, conventional ventilator tubing in, in, in that it actually is the case. Um, the way that this works is I cannot have um, a regular circuit because regular ventilator circuits have a, a significant amount of, of, of um, compliance. They're, they're fairly compliant. And that is to say when I put a certain pressure and a certain volume of air through, that circuit's going to have a little bit of give. It's going to um, expand out a little bit um, and have a certain amount of compliance. And, of course, as you know, uh, sometimes we actually have to compensate for volume loss um, due to the compliance of the ventilator circuit. Well, um, we can't have that with an oscillator. Uh, so this circuit is actually very hard um, plastic. Uh, type of tubing. It's very hard. It does not have any give at all. And you can see there's a little green cap on the end of it there. And that, that and actually when we set the machine up, when we're initially um, putting in our, our variables before we attach this to the patient, um, that, that solid cap needs to be on there. Um, you know, again, because this is a this is is a type of pressure ventilation. Um, I have a pressurized system, and and really what we're trying to do with high frequency ventilation is we're trying to oxygenate patients who we can't oxygenate through conventional means. Um, ventilation to some extent, um, often though, uh, ventilation will suffer sometimes in the case of, of high frequency ventilation. Um, and we're all often, we will do something called permissive hypercapnia where we may allow our patients, to, patients carbon dioxide to become a little, a little higher than normal. Um, and you generally, we have a certain pH range, of course, that we're shooting for. We don't want our pH, you know, generally if your pH is, is any lower, you know, 7.25, 7.2, you, you really have some issues that you need to work with uh, ventilation-wise. But really the, the big thing we're looking at with oscillation is um, that mean airway pressure. That is actually, I didn't really talk about this in the last video, but that mean airway pressure is really what determines, um, the, 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 it's the biggest determinant of, of oxygenation in our patients and, and really mean airway pressure is, 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 is sort of like PEEP. Um, not, well, it's not really like PEEP, but it does the same thing as PEEP and conventional ventilation. That mean airway pressure is, is kind of the average pressure that's always in the airway and that is a pressure that um, keeps the alveoli open. It keeps them recruited, it keeps them from collapsing, and allows for a diffusion of oxygen um, across the alveolar, alveolar capillary membrane. Okay, so uh, fair enough. So we have a basic, um, at least a basic understanding of, of how the ventilator works. And of course, if you're in respiratory, those lines there, the yellow one is the air, the green one is the, um, the oxygen line, um, and of course you have your wall connectors here, which those would go into. Um, I would like to say that the, all the pictures that I've taken of these oscillators, even on the first video, these are not, uh, these are not in patient areas, okay? Um, so there are no HIPAA issues. I'm not interacting with patients at this time. There are no patients around in, in these rooms. These are supply rooms. Um, they're completely isolated from patient care areas. Uh, so there are no, there, there are no patient, um, uh, privacy information, uh, HIPAA 
um, types of issues uh, to be had here. Uh, just I just want to go ahead and get that out. Okay, so now we know basically, you know, what we use an oscillator for, um, and kind of uh, its its basic external characteristics. Let's talk about the theory of how it works, and. Um, I guess I'll sum uh, the big picture of how, how uh, high frequency ventilation works is the following. We don't know. <laughs> so, um, like a lot of things in medicine, uh, we, we really don't know. We do not know. Okay? We don't have a solid understanding of what goes on. It is, is very non intuitive. Uh, we do think that there, there are basically five general mechanisms um, that we can look at. Um, that probably uh, have some sort of role or have a play, a play some sort of role in um, ventilating oxygenating patients high frequency. Uh, so the first one is something called augmented augmented diffusion. Okay, augmented diffusion. Uh, the second mechanism is bulk flow. Bulk flow. Let me just uh, change that here. Bulk flow. Uh, the third is known as um, inter interregional gas mix mixing um, or a pendula mechanism as you we often will say and that's spelled P-E-N-D-E-L-L-U-F-T. Pendula a mechanism that is interregional gas mixing. Um, I also have um, something called a uh, axial and radial augmented dispersion. This is known as Taylor, as T A Y L O R Taylor dispersion of gases. I have to put some dots there. Don't have enough space. And then the fifth mechanism is um, convective dispersion. Um, or convection. Convective DIS, I have to put some dots there. Okay, so these are the five mechanisms. Um, now, it's probably not just one single mechanism that's involved. Um, it's probably a combination thereof, or it could be something completely unknown to us at this point. Um, again, these are just um, theories. Um, because really, the concept of ventilating somebody um, or they, they're, they're actually they're, they're more hypotheses than theories. But um, when we talk about high frequency, how we how we actually ventilate somebody, oh, we're we're talking very very small volumes being delivered. You know, 300, 300 breaths a minute. You know, tiny little breaths. In fact, the breath, the volume of gas delivered um, in high frequency, the gas delivered, the gas delivered is actually less than the patient's dead space. Okay, The gas delivered is less than the patient's dead space. So how patients actually oxygenate and ventilate, particularly ventilate with high frequency ventilation, is, is really just, to, at least to me, is just a very non-intuitive um, mechanism that's going on, but um, when we talk about these 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 theories, augmented diffusion, bulk axle flow, axial flow, interregional gas mixing, um, Taylor dispersion, convective dispersion, um, they're not all happening. They're probably all not all happening um, independently. It's it's probably a mixture there uh, thereof, and, and again, some other mechanisms we don't understand very well. Okay, I think on the next video I'll actually talk about the. Um, uh, the mechanisms proper or at least um, give you a qualitative understanding of, of maybe what's going on. Um, as always, thanks for hanging in there.